Hello everyone. Today I wanted to talk to you a, a bit about advanced cluster management. Now this might not be the smoothest video in the world, but I think there are a number of interesting things and I just want to get them out there so that uh, you can get started on this actual reality of running applications in a hybrid cloud environment. Now that's something we've been talking about for a while, but with the advent of advanced cluster management and all of the things that have been coming out recently in OpenShift, that is something that is entirely doable and well within the, the reaches of almost anyone now. And so advanced cluster management is the thing, I think, that brings that capability to a whole new level. So as you can see, there are a number of capabilities that advanced cluster management has. On my screen, you'll see four boxes. There's end-to-end -end visibility. You can see the metrics and health of all of the systems, all of your clusters at a glance. And you know another interesting and very uh, nice major component is the cluster lifecycle management. You can install clusters easily. If you put in your credentials for Google or Amazon, you create these connections to providers, and then with a few clicks using the installer provisioned infrastructure approach, you can have an OpenShift cluster spun up and being managed by advanced cluster management in any one of those environments. You can also import your clusters uh, that already exist. For example, I have um, um, an on-prem bare metal um, in a uh, cluster that I'm going to import in this video. And, um, and then one thing to be sure that you keep in mind is you have the main cluster that's running the management, the advanced cluster management, um, hub, and that has to be accessible to all of the spoke clusters. And so your spoke clusters are going to be talking up to your hub. So then those spokes have to be able to reach via the internet or your network, the, the hub cluster. And um, so one of the things that I ran into when I was first starting with advanced cluster management is I was, I was kind of thinking it was the other way around that the, that the hub would be talking and it does, you know, talking down to the spokes but it's actually, it's important to make sure that your spoke can talk back up to the hub. And then um, another thing that we'll be showing is the, I think, a key capability. It's the ability, it's that promise of deploying an application and deploying it to any number of clusters and using all of those clusters as kind of one you know, one big resource for your application and then having a load balancer in front of that and then having the load balancer send load to all of your clusters. It could be a cluster, you know, in Amazon or a cluster on-prem and you don't care at this point. You're just letting the, you know, letting the platform do what it does best and take, take um, you know, find the resources to best run your application. And then another key component is the uh, governance, risk, and compliance uh, ability of advanced cluster management. Something that is a significant hurdle when it comes to adopting the cloud or um, you know taking advantage of these new platforms is how do you make sure that all of your you know as these clusters and all of these environments grow. You can keep track of what's being run on them. Are they in, in some sort of compliance, whether it's HIPAA or uh, PCI? That is also something that is now possible right within advanced cluster management. You can create one governance policy that can manage all of your clusters, clusters the same. And so you don't have to go and figure it out once for Amazon, once for Google, and once for on-prem. You can just figure it out once and then push those policies out to all of your clusters. So with that, let's jump right in and go to you know some of the interesting demo aspects of advanced cluster management. So I've got a connection provider to the, to, to the Google Cloud. 
I put in my credentials, so I'm not going to show you that part, but it's fairly simple. You're going to, you know, create a, a project with inside Google. So there's just a little bit of work for each each cloud, just a tiny bit that you're, you know, a lot of it's around just getting a user, um, creating, uh, you know, a landing page or a project, and then I know Amazon, you just you've got right, you've got hosted zones in Amazon, so you'll want to have a it, probably the easiest is to just buy a domain name within whatever pro provider you're going to deploy your cluster to, buy a domain name from that provider. Uh, that way it's going to be easier for you. And then within, so for instance, like Google's cloud, you'd buy a domain name. And then it's a little bit interesting. So let me go to my Google cloud. So here, here I'm in, in my Google cloud platform console. And the only thing that you have to set up, and there's instructions that I'll add to the YouTube instructions. It's pretty easy to follow. They're also in the OpenShift document. It's also in the OpenShift documentation to set up one VM for your DNS name. That So you purchase a, a domain name and then you have a hosted zone and then there's going to be a VM that is basically acting as your um, domain controller. So once that's set up though and you're inside your advanced cluster management console and you've got your connection now you've put that in place to create a new cluster that will be running inside google cloud platform just hit create cluster give it a name so i'm going to give it a very short name by the time you're watching this uh, this won't be a problem but right now because i have a decently long name Abecorn OpenShift. It's Abecorn dash OpenShift for my project name. Uh, if you go over 63 characters for the node, the name of the machine, then um, all of the things that it kind of adds together, you'll end up not being able to deploy. So right now I'm using a very short name, but by the time you probably run this, that won't be a problem. It's already actually fixed, just not in this version. And then it detects that so i purchased a domain name from google and i call you know the, the domain name is deanopenshift.com and once you create that connection um it knows about that and i put that in before but if you select that then that will come up as an option and depending on the cloud that you're in it will detect the domains that are in your zones and then you can select from them and they'll drop down and I'll use 4.4.0 for the cluster version and then the connection provider this is where you select that existing connection provider ID and then you can change the size and the location so I want to go into US Central because I'm in the Midwest. And then you would you could change the the size. I'm going to go with the standard size of the both the master and the worker nodes. And then I'm going to give it a label. Now I am going to use this later on to do some interesting things for um for various things. So maybe I'll, you know, I'll just say um demo you can give it whatever label that you want and then hit create then that will take a little bit of time but that's really all you have to do to create a cluster and after a, after it is done installing you don't have to lift a finger while it's doing that then you'll see that there will be a green checkbox and it'll be managed and you'll be able to see the health of everything and and then we'll start deploying applications also there's um so let's let's let that run for a while and let's, let's also import the cluster for management that this um, instance of advanced cluster management is running on so that's a bare metal instance so let's go ahead and import that too let's go back to clusters or we could hit click click add cluster. So let's go uh, import existing cluster. 
we're going to call it um, bare metal cluster. And we're just going to generate the command. And then we're going to copy that. And I'm going to take that and go to an instance here. I'm going to go to the I want to make sure that I've got the right um, cube, so I don't. I'm going to change this to be... source that now when I do OC get nodes that should be my K flow tech so it's this is my bare metal cluster that I have uh, running on-prem I'm going to take that command that we just copied and run it So within a little bit of time, we will be able to see that cluster. So we've got a bare metal cluster that's pending import. All right, once those are done, we're going to go to the next part of this video, and we're going to deploy an application that spans both clusters. You can see here that our bare metal cluster is now ready. Our other cluster that's being provisioned in Google's cloud is still provision, provisioning. We can take a look at, so let's take a look, quick look at our bare metal clus cluster. All right, so it's ready. We have five nodes, five are active. We can take a look at the nodes. We've got three masters, two workers. You can see that there are eight virtual CPU and the uh, amount of RAM that has been allocated to each. All right. And then, so if we go back to our clusters again, one of the things that I also wanted to show, so our Google cluster, we can take a look at the log and see where we're at. So when you click on that, it brings you back to the OpenShift console and you can see right here that we're still waiting for the bootstrapping to complete. Once that does, that Google Cloud cluster will also be ready. Okay, now it's been not too long, but we have a GCP cluster that's ready now. So there's two clusters that are under management inside advanced cluster management for Kubernetes. We have our bare metal and our GCP cluster, which we've named simply OS, just due to that um, requirement for having a short name, which will be removed by the time you watch this video. And let's click on the GCP cluster. Because we created and installed this using advanced cluster management, we have a few nice things that are in the console ready for us. We can download the kube config file directly via the user interface. And we can also reveal our credentials. It's okay that I'm showing this. This cluster I will spin down um, also by the time you view this video. And now, one other thing that we have to do, and I'm to show deploying an application uh, across multiple clouds, that is merge our multiple kube config files. To do that, there are instructions at this location, if you follow uh, the links that I was just clicking. And I've, I've done that here, 
and because of the nice ability to just come in here and download the kube config for the gcp cluster i downloaded that and then i uploaded it to um i uploaded it to this file to this machine and then i put it into a directory called kube configs so i've got a bare metal and an os gcp kube config um, dot yaml file there were just a couple of commands that I ran. If you go back to the instructions, I did a grep on both of those YAML files, and then I listed out all of the user uh, names that are in the files. And I had, I did have this overlap of the user admin. You can simply just run these commands as is just change the name of the uh, you know kubeconfig one and two, change the names to the you know, uh, kubeconfigs that you have, and then it will just replace it uh, the admin with kube one or kube two, etc. Once you have that, then I modified my bash profile. So if I go to nano dot um, I modified my export to include all of the paths to so the paths to both kube config files and then I did a source on that and now I can actually say oc config get contexts and you can see the clusters that I have the so these are all, there are just two clusters here, but the two that, um, to take note of, we've got our OS, so a GCP cluster named OS, and then our bare metal cluster that has a name of OpenShift 4. The next step is to flatten this into one single merged view. Let's say, um, make DIR sign kube configs merged and then we're going to say oc config view flatten kube configs merged kube config And then we can say OC config dollar sign or um, tilde configs merged config config view. Right, and now we can export that and use that in place of the individual kubeconfig files. Then you can do things like OC config use kube one and say OC get nodes. And you'll see that it displays the information for my Google cluster. And then if I were to switch and say OC config use kube2 and say OC get nodes, now it is showing the bare metal nodes in that cluster. Pretty cool. I think that's a good place to stop. Please join me again next time where we will complete deploying an application across the hybrid cloud. Thank you.